So we'll get started. Happy anniversary, Happy Academy. We have been established since 2016. Oops, uh, sorry about that uh, over there at Facebook. This kind of fell off the little stand, but um, welcome cousin. I won't hear you. I don't have my headset on, but I'm recording us and we'll talk in our private sessions, but welcome to H2O Monday. I don't know why this is not staying tight, but this was all devised from uh, habits, uh, the seven habits of highly effective people uh, that brought me to the science of mind, uh, which is the study of science and spirituality together. So I became a facilitator of the seven habits. And then I became a practitioner of, of metaphysics, knowing that we create our lives and then a minister, and then ordained, and now a company. So Happy Academy is all about peace and happiness. We are in the season of nonviolence still. This is, um, I've been recording the days. I've been keeping up with them. Let's see what day are we? Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to guess now. So this is day four of uh, Women History Month. I believe this is day 32 of the season of nonviolence. And then we are also uh, about day 20 or 21 with Lent. So I, I had that all written down, but I've been uh, meditating today, kind of celebrating the fact that um, we can all begin with the a win-win end in mind. That's how H2O got started as habit two. Also with the Harriets, those of us that want to join the Zoom later, I'm going to have my cousin, he's on talking about his mom tonight because in this season of uh, Women's History Month, she's a woman of history for me, along with Harriet Tubman. So if Avis joined, I'm going to have her talk about uh, Harriet Tubman. She's actually sending me something because she met someone that is really into Harriet Tubman as much as I am. And I want to have that shared on our video later for broadcasting on YouTube. So habit two is begin with the end in mind. And then H2O is water. We are predominantly water. We need water for healing. We need water for drinking. We need water to swim in, to bathe in. I mean... Water is everything. Water is in everything. And the medicine that we take, if we have to have that, um, even preventive medicine is in the fruits and the vegetables. And it's just everything that we need to survive. So with that said, let's open with Mother Teresa's recipe for peace since we are in the season of nonviolence. And uh, you, I pledge you to read it every day. At, during this season and pledge to yourself to be nonviolence against yourself, which starts the peace act that, that gives us peace within and with everyone, starting with ourselves. So people are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. And every one of these includes ourselves. We start with self first. We're nonviolence against ourselves first. We're Forgive ourselves first, be kind, succeed first. So um, if you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, others may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, others may forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you got anyway. You see in the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. So with that, I love the fact that we, uh, habit three is put first things first. I'm going to try to stick to the habits on, on Monday nights. And then I've got a few people that want to start to talk about wealth management because we can't do much without, uh, actual funds in the bank. And, um, 
So we're probably going to do something on Tuesday. We're going to wrap it around the power of decision and spiritual economics. I have a couple of people I've been talking to to see what night works for them. So check your calendar, see if that works for you. We'll probably kick something off. If not mid-month, um, 1st of April. Um, we know tax season is we're in the midst of that. And uh, I'm going to be working on that too. But our economics is so important. And um we want to have an abundant mentality. We want to want to align with abundance. And when we do that, we draw that into our lives. With this being Women History Month and um, me, <laughs> I'm a woman too. And I was just watching something on HBO where they were talking about women's rights and right there was civil rights and the rights of other things. When we put first things first, that's really putting that power, the law, fundamental truths, principles first. And when we do that, we have these dynamic people like Harriet Tubman. And I want to mention Mary Tyler Moore because her special is on too. And the groundbreaking things that she did as a woman, my aunt Harriet, she moved from the South to the North. I was born in the North, came to the South. All those contrasts are uh, absolutely amazing in the components that makes up an individual. So as we're looking at habits, we have to look at the specific sense that habits are uniquely individual as well as collective, but it starts with the person. So uh, first habit is put first thing, uh, excuse me, first habit is be proactive. That's the pause. Don't let the stimulants or the response clash together. Give some space. That's where you put um, <clears throat> habit two, uh, begin with the end in mind, uh, affirmation, a prayer, if that word is safe for you, uh, things that you put there that you let the powers that be that plants the seeds that um, allows the sun to come up every day, wherever we live, the moon is always there and it's different phases. So we begin with the end in mind and then act on it. Put first things first. All of those are private victories. And as you do your private victory, you can get into the victory with others, which is think win-win. That means we stop and we consider both sides, not just one, not win-lose, not lose-win, not just somebody win. And I like the ultimate win-win, no deal. And then have it five, seek for us to understand, then to be understood. That means we got to have two private victory winners to be thinking when, when, and seeking for us to understand and then to be understood. And then we can synergize. And when we synergize, that's the teams, that's the families. Those are functional families. Those are functional teams. Those are win-win teams, win-win families, win-win companies, win-win organizations. If we're at odds with each other, a house divided cannot stand, as Lincoln says. So we don't want to divide the house. And habit seven, I wear a shawl, uh, a saw on my charm bracelet right here that reminds us to sharpen the saw, take care of ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and that's this body, this kingdom, this temple, and then social, emotionally mean the company we keep, which is what I call birds of a feather, the company we keep. So make sure you're getting your copies. Um, we want to make sure we get this um, so, to over 2 million copies sold. Thank you, Mary Kay, for planning that idea in my head because she was a spectacular woman. I'm still seeing Mary Kay consultants around. So birds of a feather would be the company that you're keeping. And if you want to talk about those habits and and one person that I am very dear friends with, I became a practitioner because of, of his role in my life. And that's how I got to be where I am today. He says, I'm in good company or he's in good company. And I really like that because as we're in Lent and we know that um, all the, uh, the members of the Bible, Noah, Moses, Jesus, uh, Mary, Ruth, all of them, all of these crusaders, trailblazers in the Bible, there was some difficulty that they went through, some hardship, they abandonment um, from the closest people they love, a lack of respect. And we know what happened with um, uh, Jesus. And we're in that season now where we're getting ready to celebrate the fact that he, he came and they tried to get rid of him and there's no getting rid of a power like that. 
So that's what we all are. As we begin with the end in mind and we decide that we're going to be kind anyway, no matter what happens to us, that we're going to we're going to succeed anyway. We're going to build anyway when people tear down because we're in good company and the company we keep. I'm going to read first things first. Now, I still put that out there. Thank you for those that are viewing it and responding to it. I hope you're reading Mother Teresa's Recipe for Peace Every Day. That's on the website. Uh, I did send the link out there to LinkedIn and Facebook because we're still working on that. My my interns are busy, man, and there's been some things in the family. So I'm actually going to write a treatment for it, my team and anybody who wants prayer or what I call spiritual mind treatment, because that really focuses on what we want in mind. We don't have to go back to our childhood hurts and traumas if we need work with that. Happy Academy can help with that too. But one of the things that I found out that we really have specialty in with the science of mind is we just hone in on what you need. If you need a job, we pray for that job. If you are headed for an operation, we pray for that operation, do a treatment for it, affirm for it, begin with the end in mind for it. So when we're building Happy Academy, which we're doing now, fundraising ideas are coming up, uh, finding ways to get the book out there. I've got another book in the ready to get published. So we need funds for that. And all kinds of ideas are coming. And as the ideas come, the universe will make way for those things to happen. So with that said, today's March 4th, life is one indivisible whole. And to break that down easily is each of us are a part of the whole. The planet needs the water, that needs the earth, it needs the sun, it needs the people, it needs the plants, it needs the animals. We're all cohabitating this together and we can't do it without the other. Couldn't be broadcasting without a phone, without electricity, without lights, without the internet, without Zoom, without Facebook. All of those things are interconnected and we can't do one without the other. So as we're in this season of nonviolence, let us start with the peace within that we're all collaborative. And when you think win-win, because we're proactive, one of the things I do is, I remember I had my fist balled up for being proactive and not to bounce ourselves up against the thing that bothers us the most. When we're thinking win-win and somebody's holding on to something, be it a person, place, or thing, if we're both in our private victory, we just kind of let go of it. And that's what Birds of a Feather talked about it. I, I couldn't go get the birds. They flew off and they did their thing and one was there and it stayed put and they made it overnight. If the next night it would have been too cold, they would have just froze to death because they're tropical birds. They went out on their adventure and they came back, but all we could do was affirm that they were okay and that we would like to have our birds back. Will they make it through the night? But we can go out there and get them. And that's what prayer and our affirmation and beginning with the end in mind does. You send that signal out there. And when you send the signal out there, the universe will take care of what's going on with it. And if it's meant to come back to us, it will. So we just let it go. And we let go of everything that holds us down. One of the books, I, I've, I've never read The Wizard of Oz. And the when I was picking up a journal, this book was there. And as we talk about stories and our own stories, if you've seen The Wizard of Oz, the movie versus The Wizard of Oz, the book, and I haven't gotten through it yet, it's a, very, it's a little bit different. Um, as they often say, the books can be different than the actual movie. They have to embellish the movie. But what I do like about The Wizard of Oz is that we have to use our head, our heart, and our body, which is a part of what was in her journey with the scarecrow, the tin man, and uh, lion and then no place like home is really wherever we are when when I spoke of the birds um, the birds went out into the world but they came back home home sweet home and home is where the heart is and you know they weren't born in this particular place they had a house before then and they went to a house after that but home was where the heart 
is. And, and the heart could be in Boston, the heart could be in Atlanta, the heart could be in Italy, the heart could be in South Africa, the house could be in Rio, the heart could be anywhere you are. I've left my heart in a lot of different places, having worked all over the world. So as we are celebrating Women's History Month and uh, all the women that are in our lives, and I always celebrate Harry, the two Harriets, and I'm celebrating Happy Academy. So Angela Nisi Harmon and her book. Oh, somebody's giving me a hand. Thank you so much, cousin. And as we are developing uh, this company with my internships and volunteers and fundraisers that are happening, I'm so excited that we're out here to make a difference and being happy in the world. What I want to close with is from the science of mind, a cousin. And the science of mind talks about prayer. And you can call it whatever word you want to. I like the word affirmation. I call it like natural laws, fundamental truths. But I have a talk coming up for um, a center, unity in the mountains. And I want everybody to take this question for the week as you begin with the end in mind. What is your superpower? That's going to be my talk title for the 17th. If you want to join us at Unity um, Virtual uh, face, uh, Facebook, I think they do broadcast it that way. But And Zoom, I believe. But what is your superpower? And I believe that uh, prayer is my superpower. I believe that if I don't know what's going on, I just stop and I pause and I count on that power that made everybody on the planet I count on that power that made the people that have gone on before me. And I count on that power so I can be an example. So I can leave something for that made a difference like the people that are in my power group. So with that, I'm going to open up. I think I turned to the page. And I'm going to just speak to where it says the power of thought. <laughs> It has taken humanity thousands of years to learn that it has the power to control its own destiny. From the Bible, we have assurances, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The old Greek philosophers understood something of the meaning of thought, what we expect. Aristotle said that we find what we wish. And then Demosthenes said that we believe. And then Shakespeare says, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Wow. It is one thing to know principle. It is another thing to apply it. So that's what prayer is. That's what affirmation is. That's what habit two is. It is beginning with the end in mind. It is knowing that there is a power bigger than we are that can handle any given situation at any given time. Because you can't tell me Harriet Tubman didn't know higher power because she lived to be 91 years old. She freed herself from slavery. She made her way to the North. She had help all along the way of all different colors and shapes and sizes. So color, age, all of that doesn't matter. All it matters is the power that's within us. And then she went back and got more. So it is our turn as we begin with the end in mind, as we are growing, we go back and get more. Happy Academy is here to make sure we have more happiness through a peaceful way of living because everybody's not going to understand every individual. There are sets of twins that are different and they were split from the same egg. I think it's how twins come. And so if we know that we're all independent, unique individuals, we'll never see anything quite the same or alike. We know that we go to the one source that created every single being that exists on the planet ever and unite there. And then that's where that symphony, that harmony, that congruency, that happiness comes in.
We're going to close with a little bit of richer living because we told you we want to get into some more wealth management as we increase. Uh, I like that lend and not borrow idea that the Bible gives. And so we want to increase richer living and richer living really begins with our thought process. We create money and we create wealth with thinking and feeling and being that. And it doesn't mean you have to have billions in the bank initially because people can show up and, and help your dream come true because we know that money doesn't make the person. We know that putting in the center uh, that principle first, you will have the right family members around you. You will have the right job that you're working. You will have the right finances. Uh, any enemy that you have that you made within yourself or out there won't be an enemy anymore. You won't see it that way. Uh, your spirituality will not control you because you know that whatever that power says, you go there. It's not a religion, but our spirit. And what else is out there that we get attracted to? Possessions, the cars, the houses, all those things are just material things. Nothing we can take with us when we leave because we know that we are here to leave. So what are we doing in the meantime? Are we having fun? Are we happy? Are we in good company? And are we keeping good company? So with the Wizard of Oz, make sure you know what's behind your curtain. <laughs> and make sure that it's it's true. You're not hiding anything. You're not binding anything. I, I heard a confession is good for the soul. If you can't confess to a person about anything that's hurting you or bothering you, use a journal. I journal all the time. That's the way you get it out. Happy Academy hopefully will be producing journals. Have a gratitude journal. Make sure you put the happiness down all the time in your life because it's always something to make you happy so with richard living and then if you want to hop on the link is out there if you want to do zoom private time and 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 share some of your women in your life that have stood out to you um we will actually be um probably honoring ruth gator gainsburg and eleanor roosevelt next week and um the following week um i think mamie till and um Marilee evers and then at the end of the month, um, a couple of people that are personal in my life. So as we close out March 4th, um, H2O Monday, I am free with the freedom of God. We wish, we all wish to be free. But at the time, we should realize that liberty is not a license, is not licensed to us. To say that we are free with the freedom of God or law, whatever word works better for you, does not mean that we are free to do what contradicts that divine nature. We are free only in the freedom, which law is the freedom to be alive, enjoying living, and to enter into the activities of everyday living with enthusiasm and interest. We are free to love and be loved. We are free to give full and complete expression to every capacity we possess, provide freedom that does not harm no one and no thing. This freedom is enough because it is not destructive and is not here to destroy because anything that is destructive will destroy itself. And anything that is doing anything against nature is dividing itself. Therefore, we want to pray, thy will be done. But within this, we will know that there is a scope enough for our own self-expression, plenty of room to move around and express life to its fullest. So be happy, Sienna Week. Thank you and happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy Academy. <laughs> hey cousin hey cousin how good. are you I am blessed and kind of a little, a little under the weather but God is good uh, uh, with me and full around me and uh, joy and peace is my everlasting uh, strength and guidance so I am I am encouraged, y'all. Uh, very good, very good. I'm a yes, uh, we can talk. So, so 
So back to the recording, I paused it, audience, but I want my cousin to talk about my Aunt Harriet a little bit because that was his mom. And I recorded some things on paper about her birth date, her transition date, and a little bit of her history. But I'm going to let him tell just about five minutes of it, and then we're going to pause and do our private thing. Uh, so audience, here's my cousin Edward, and he's going to talk about one of my H2O Harriet's which is his mother, Harriet Hainsworth, Harriet Dix Hainsworth. <laughs> That's right. Um, me and Coach, uh, the, uh, the, the memories and the thoughts and the activity of uh, encouragement and enlightenment that uh, uh, Harriet Dix Hainsworth has presented uh, in her walk uh, going forth uh, uh, in her years of... Uh, here in, uh, on this earth, uh, she was a very compassionate uh, woman that loved her family and believed in unity and believed in respect and believed in sincereness and honesty and not, not occupied fear in her life. Uh, my mother was a, a mother that uh, took care of the kids was respond would respond to the law and being obedient to God and uh in 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 doing that uh she lived the life of caring uh and presenting herself as a mother figure as we come in this season of recognizing women how sincere and faithful uh women are they are the center poles of life and growth and encouragement and inspiration. Uh, and my mother did that. I uh, have it did that uh, with her attention of loving uh, next door neighbors. She took care of kids. Uh, my mother would invite neighbors in. I mean, kids from outside to see the. <laughs> If they was hungry or they was cold or they was scared, she would come and grab hold of them and color them and, and reassure them that it is well. And this is the atmosphere that this is the spirit of Harriet uh, Dix Hainsworth, of compassion, of faithfulness, of sincereness, and of hope. Uh, and, and with with that with that motivation, with that energy, she was a great inspiration of a better and more excellent way of life of uh, going forward. Of when was her birthday, cousin? To tell her, tell everybody uh, her the birthday, birthday when my she mother transitioned. Was born, uh, uh, sep uh, uh, December twenty four. <laughs> On in 1936, uh, in Sumter, South Carolina, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, she graduated uh, from the Sumter County uh, School. Okay. Uh, back in that back in those days, and uh, and uh, she 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 only went to. Uh, uh, she did not graduate. Oh, she she came out of school early. Uh, she uh, got married and connected to uh, my father at the age of seven, sixteen. Uh, so she she had left the school and and she uh, gave birth to seven kids. Uh, seven. Uh, which was four girls, I mean, four boys and two girls and th actually three, three girls. We, uh, she lost her, her third, her second, uh, her second uh, child, which was Angeline uh, when she was a baby. And, uh, and, and after Angeline, it was uh, Ernest Hainsworth, Ernest, it was the three boys. And there was two girls, and I am the oldest of the family. And uh, as of 
Angeline is the only one that passed away. We still, ha I still have, there's still six of her children, all six of her children that is still alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, active there in between Boston and Atlanta. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the year she was, she passed away, I can't tell you. It was October 31st. 2003, I'll never forget it. <laughs> it was October the 31st on Halloween. Yeah, 2003. Yeah, so it was a tragic thing. It mm -hmm. was quick. She was, was 66. She was 66 years old. Wow. So there was a great accomplishment of uh of uh of her life. Uh she she did not work. She took care of her kids. The my father did the work make sure and as uh, she did try she did go out and got a part-time job well and when she uh moved to boston when she moved to boston in 1955 is when they moved to boston uh massachusetts and they stayed here in boston massachusetts until night my father left in 1976 and my mother left Boston in 1977. And uh, she went, they, they moved down to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, that's where in Atlanta, Georgia that day, they lived their life and uh, they moved on to better life uh, at the appointed time. Thank you, cousin, for that. I appreciate that. We're going to pause it. So thank you. That was a wonderful session with my cousin. Avison joined us tonight. But I want to close out Happy Academy's um, celebratory eighth year, um, really uh, established in 2016, but really kicked off in 2020. And then once Birds of a Feather came out, really, really set us in a new direction that maybe we'll have brick and mortar one day, but we're a virtual campus right now. And your donations will contribute to children that are hospitalized. Um, children that are in the foster care system is really my main focus, but children of all ages that are dealing with the fact that you're forgetting that the power is within you because the world will help us forget. And we are to remember that so we don't repeat it. And when we learn the lesson, we grow from there. If you ask Thomas Edison, he made a bunch of mistakes, but every mistake he made led him to us having light and let there be light. So each of us will make mistakes. There are no perfections um, except in that power that makes everything perfect. And that's where we are. So there's two cards from my seven habit stage. One is risk and one is attitude. So I think I'm going to read the risk one. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is a, 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 the risk of appearing sentimental. I'm trying to see it in the light. To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose feeling is to risk exposing your true self. To place your ideas, your dreams before a crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risk must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow but they cannot learn, feel, change, grow, love, or live. Only a person who risks is free. Stay free. And thank you, Mr. Pharrell Williams, for making that song happy. That's how Happy Academy was born. If you know what happiness is to you, and happiness is the truth. So to thy own self be true. See you in a week. Thank you. Donate, donate, donate. Thank you, thank you for listening.